Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Before mounting casts on the HANA articulator, particularly the H2 model articulator with the protrusive retrusive adjustment, we must consider the alignment of the articulator. Uh, cases that are done previously may leave the articulator out of alignment. We would check for the alignment on the articulator by positioning the vertical axis at the zero reading, by placing the incisal guide table at its zero reading, then making sure the centric lock screw is loosened, providing freedom in the articulator. Then with the pulling the upper member of the articulator forward and arcing it and bringing it down to touch the incisal guide table, with the incisal pin in a perpendicular fashion to the table, the pin should bisect the antero-posterior antero dimension of the table. It should also be in the very center of the table with the, cent uh, with the, incis the blade of the incisal pin running along the center groove of the table. The incisal pin, I will again note, must be flush with the top of the table in order for this in order for this alignment to be checked perp or, or correctly if i alter that relationship you can see the pin indeed does change position on the table in the antero posterior direction we'll then put it back to its flush position with the top of the articulator and focus our attention on the condylar element of the articulator. When the condylar element is in its proper alignment, starting alignment, the condylar element or condylar ball as we'll refer to it should be against the centric stop thumb screw, which is this brass thumb screw, and a cylindrical spacer should lie in front of it. The reading on the thumb screw, the undersurface of it should read the zero calibration on the protrusive, retrusive calibration. It should read zero millimeters. This, cent this notch in the thumb screw should align with the notch on the condylar uh, element. If we have that position in the condylar area and we have the centered incisal pin on the incisal guide table, with no lateral play in the instrument, the lateral play may be checked by holding the condylar balls firm against the, uh, the centric stop and moving laterally. If there is no movement in the articulator, it is then aligned in the proper position and is ready to accept the cast for mounting. Now we should consider an instrument that is out of alignment. Again, the vertical axis is set at zero degrees. The, the incisal pin is flush with the top of the articulator, and the incisal table is set at zero degrees. Now we're first going to consider the effects of a malrelationship in the condylar area. 
we can see by looking closely that this thumb screw is adjustable. It is adjustable both in a retrusive fashion and in a protrusive fashion. Now, the effect of mounted cast is exactly the opposite of what you might have because of uh, earlier tapes you realized that this being a non-archon instrument, if the condylar ball is in a posterior position, it simulates a protrusive relationship of mounted cast. The reverse is true. If the condylar ball is allowed to come forward, it will simulate a retrusive position of mounted cast. Now, this positioning that we see would, would simulate a protrusive relationship of mounted cast because the thumb screw is not at the zero position but posterior to it. It is possible for this cylindrical spacer to be missing in some cases in which the thumb screw would then have to be adjusted backward to a zero position where the situation I have here, have simulated here, the thumb screw should be adjusted to the forward position. Now, I want to look first before changing that adjustment at the effect on the incisal table. If we look closely at the table, we will see that the incisal pin is deflected to the side at which the condylar ball is most posterior. This, in effect, in this case, is deflected to the right because the right condylar element, the right condylar ball, is simulating the protrusive relationship. Now, we can alter this. The first thing we must do is to adjust the set screw on the inner surface of the condylar elements. This set screw must be released before the centric stop thumb screw can be altered. With that set screw released, we may then make the adjustment on the centric lock thumb screw. In this case, I'm moving it to its forward position. at the zero indicator. Now, it's very important that we look closely at the protrusive-retrusive calibration to make sure that the undersurface of the centric stop thumb screw is aligned with the zero calibration. Not, not in front of it or behind it, but the undersurface of the brass centric stop thumb screw is aligned with the zero indicator. Now this must be achieved on both bilaterally in both condylar areas. Now we can look at the effect in the incisal pin area. The, in, the pin or the blade of the incisal pin indicates that it is in a more correct position anteroposteriorly. It should be in the correct position. Laterally, it need not be in the correct position if the horizontal axis or the shaft of the horizontal axis has not yet been adjusted. So what we would see the difference being before it was slightly askewed to the right because the condylar ball was uh, posterior and now we have allowed the condylar ball to come anterior and that brings the blade of the incisal pin to a more correct position. Now, with again both of these condylar areas adjusted perfectly, we can look at the lateral alignment of the articulator. We mentioned that in the, the articulator that is perfectly aligned, 
the blade of the incisal pin should run perpendicular to the groove on the incisal table, the blade tip. Now, it could be slightly askew or have lateral play. If it were locked in the lateral position, it would be malaligned, as well as if there were play in the lateral positioning, this could also be considered a malalignment. We should look at the posterior part of the articulator to see what causes this lateral play. Now, if we look at this brass shaft of the horizontal condylar axis, we will see that it should lie flush along the condylar ball or the condylar element. Now, if there is lateral play, this will not allow the articulator to return to its proper uh, starting position consistently. This lateral play or malalignment in the lateral direction as evident by the incisal pin, can be altered by adjustment of the brass sleeves. To do this, we must first release the set screws on the bottom of the horizontal condylar axis. You then must have a wrench which fits correctly the brass sleeve. Now, it is best to initially create uh, lateral play in both brass sleeves to allow a perfect centering of the uh, perfect centering of the incisal pin. Now that the set screw is released, I'm going to alter. I'm going to alter this brass sleeve relationship to the condylar ball or condylar element. We can now see that we've created space between the condylar shaft and the condylar ball. This creates more lateral play. But we do this bilaterally or unilaterally, depending upon the needs of this particular maladjustment. I say unilaterally or, or bilaterally because what we desire is to a correct centering of the incisal pin. So we create enough play to correctly position the incisal pin. Now I see I have created this much lateral play. Now with the incisal pin in that center groove on the incisal table, I will then hold that position and go to the posterior brass sleeve and adjust it. It is necessary that you hold the incisal pin in the correct position or go back and check it frequently. I'm making an attempt to move the brass sleeve toward the condylar element. Now, I'm taking the lateral play for the right side out of the articulator. Now, when it reaches the bass sleeve, you will meet some resistance, and you should check that it has no give. I'm trying to move it, but it has no give toward that particular condylar element, in this case, the right condylar element. Now, this procedure must be done on both sides to eliminate all lateral play. When we are sure that the central, that the incisal pin is centered and the lateral play is eliminated, we may then tighten or secure the set screw 
on the undersurface of the horizontal condylar axis, locking the position of the brass sleeves. We now have the articulator centered anteroposteriorly, as evidenced by the positioning of the pin on the incisal guide table, and it is also evident that we are positioned in the lateral direction because it is centered on the groove, the central groove of the incisal guide table. In the condylar area, we are also assured that the condylar ball or condylar element is just touching the centric stop and the centric stop is at the zero position on the protrusive retrusive calibration. Let us now look at the other adjustable components of the articulator and the effect that they may have on the position of the incisal pin. If we look closely at the horizontal condylar inclination, we can see that we can change the horizontal condylar inclination without changing the position of the incisal pin on the incisal table. We can also note that the condylar element or the condylar ball rotates about the transverse axis freely. It should be noted here that the adjustment of the brass sleeve to take out the lateral play in the instrument should not be so tight that it freezes the condylar ball. The condylar ball should rotate about the transverse axis. Looking at the rotation about a vertical axis, we can see that the changing of this also has no effect on the incisal pin in its placement on the incisal table. Now we look at it another way in the converse direction, changing the inclination of the incisal table has no effect in the condylar area. The ball still remains against the centric stop thumb screw. We, with the articulator centered and everything secured, we can ensure ourselves that no errors because of malalignment of the, of the articulator or incorrect starting point of the articulator will not be built in to any restorations fabricated on the articulator. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.